everybody. This is Sehi Duran. I am the Director of Graduate Programs at Trinity Bible College and Graduate School, and I am here with one of our favorite alum, Jared. Oh, yeah, favorite. Man, all right. <laughs> One of our many favorites. Uh, he represents uh, Church Multiplication Network, and he is with us today. And so he's a national CMN director of discovery and development. And we will get to know a little bit more about who he is and his ministry, his journey in Christ, and finally his time at Trinity. Just graduated in 2019 with his master's in mission and leadership. Great program. So welcome, Jared. So Thank you. It's an honor to be here and hang out with you and get to hang out with some people from Trinity. Yes. Well, Jared and I actually met for the first time yesterday. So I was at a sectional meeting and he's in North Dakota and he's in between. He's literally in between like speaking engagements right now. Right. Is that right? Yeah, I'm in I'm in Dickinson, North Dakota, and I'm in the pastor's office right now. I just spoke and uh, we're in between uh, services and I'll speak a little bit later when I'm done here tonight. But uh, man, I had to make time to be with you guys. Wow. Thank you so much. We feel very honored and loved. Before we just continue and to get to know you a little bit more, I do want to announce the winner of last week's book. Mandy Bellman wrote a book on Mind What Matters, and Jared's going to be announcing the name. So who's the winner, Jared? All right, here it is. Joe Recoletis. <laughs> Joe, thank you. You know, Joe is another alum, and he's been faithfully attending our Facebook Live two weeks in a row. So I'm pretty sure he's going to be here this week, too. So Joe, right. if you're watching, you're the winner. And we're going to be mailing that book to you. In fact, this is a digital book. So we're going to buy it and just send it to you as a gift. So thank you for joining. And thanks for being Trinity family. Jared, now let's hear about your journey. You are serving at the National Assemblies of God Ministry as a Director of Discovery and Development. But your journey uh, in Christ is kind of amazing. And even your ministry as a pastor uh, yesterday, when we were talking about our ministry and how our heart for the community, and I I heard that you were a police officer as well. I mean, while being a pastor, how does it even work? Can you tell us about your journey a little bit? Yeah, well, I know it's hard to tell with the mustache that I was in law enforcement, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it, I got saved the end of high school, uh, gave my life to Jesus and uh, realized that I needed a savior. As soon as I was saved, I realized I was God was calling me to be a pastor, but I had no clue what that meant, uh, just not being that churched. And uh, so I ended up going to school to become a pastor. I met my wife, and then we started pastoring. But God led us back to the church that I gave my life to Jesus in, uh, in South Dakota. And so we eventually became the pastors of the church. Well, while pastoring, um, we were asked to start the chaplain program at our sheriff's office. And then from there, in conversations, you know, with law enforcement officers, they would say, you know, we trust you more if you were one of us. <laughs> so it became this whole thing of, and then I, I started going to school at night. Uh, and then six months later, uh, passed all the tests and got sworn in as uh, a deputy. I was just, you know, just out working with people. Uh, I had a, I had people that were, I work with and So I'm on a shift in a squad car with them. So Great opportunities to talk about life and ministry and Jesus. And uh, it was a ton of fun, ton of fun. Wow. Uh, God did some like great things through that, that season. Looks like What's you're that? In ministry, you know, like. Well, yeah, I mean, it, the mustache does a lot for me. It, it got me there. So, no, <laughs> it was great, though. It was so much fun. Just I, I'm a true believer that I think if ministry is successful, it's got to be arrows out. It's got to be community focused. And um, it just got me to our community so well and just made great friendships and relationships and really kept me grounded in what the needs of our community were. So it was great. Yeah, I mean, I was a police chaplain back in Springfield before I joined Trinity. And at, there was a time that I felt like, should I become a police officer? But I wasn't that brave. I wasn't as brave as you were. So I was just like cheering them on. But that is a commitment that is going all into the community. And speaking of the community, uh, your current ministry is all about building the body of Christ and church planters that are going to invest in their own communities through um, church multiplication network. In fact, I actually benefited from that when I, when my husband and I planted the church in Springfield, Missouri, yes. about eight years ago, we did a matching fund 
Yes. And, uh, it was it was such a wonderful ministry. So you want to like speak a little bit about this ministry, and if you are one of those uh, who feel this holy nudge uh, about planting a church, listen carefully what Jared has to say. When God put on our heart for our church in South Dakota to plant, uh, we planted seven churches, but I had never planted a church before. And uh, through relationships, I got connected with the Church Multiplication Network, and they took me in like family. Uh, and I went to training and we started learning how to plant a church and we started planting one after another, after another. And the church location network really came alongside and said, your dream matters. Um, it didn't matter where I was, the context I sat in or what our specific, you know, model was going to be. Yeah. It was these incredible principles, but they said, your dream matters. And we've got relationship with you. Let's go. Yeah. So to now fast forward. And now I get to help somebody with their dreams, man, I, I couldn't ask for anything better. It's just so much fun to be able to come alongside pastors and leaders that God's put a dream in their heart. And I think one of the beautiful things about the church location network is we're principle based. So it doesn't matter what model of church that you're going to plant, or you feel God's put on your heart to, we'll give you key principles that'll work in uh, any context. And we've got great people that teach content. Mm -hmm. And then we've got great coaches that help you contextualize. Right. And so um, when you are getting, you know, encouragement and great principles and best practices, and then coaches that help you contextualize, AI, it's a recipe for a win. Uh, we've seen incredible success. We did it in our own churches that we planted, and we're still seeing it to today. Yeah, I mean, you are the scholar practitioner, you know, you when you were part of Trinity Bible College and graduate school, uh, you were studying a mission and leadership master's degree. And you actually talked about this in your thesis, and this was part of your studies while you're pastoring, correct? And yeah. it actually became a book. One of you today uh, or this week, you'll be winning this book. We will mail this to you, but this here is a catch. You're going to have to tag a friend who is a Trinity alum, and you can also maybe comment where you would like to plant a church. If you were to plant a church, comment where you want to. If you're a current pastor, uh, you can write your city name. It's okay. <laughs> your your family's gonna watch it. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I'll just just do that and tag your friend, and then let's do that. But let's talk about this book a little bit because this one came out of your passion and your experiences as a pastor. And this crux of this book is really phenomenal because the, this misunderstanding is if you want to plant a church or a multi site church or a church planting church. You're going to have to be a mega church. You're going to have to have a lot of resources, but you debunked that myth. So talk to us about that. Yeah. You know, I was really blessed that in the process of doing my master's, we were on the season of planting these churches. So uh, although I didn't use my church very often in my thesis, uh, my thesis helped shape this book. Uh, one of the things that here, let me just say this, if, if to anybody listening that's in the rural context, uh, this is the perception. To the men and women who answer the call and the assignment to go to the bush of Africa as missionaries, we call them our heroes, rightly so. Yeah. But the men and women who answer the call to the rural places of America, somehow they've been labeled losers. Mm -hmm. And let me just say, if you're a man or woman called to the rural places of America, you are a hero. And yeah. God has called you and your assignment matters. And so if there's anything that I'm wanting you to do in this book, along with giving practicals of how to do it, it's just saying man, we need you to answer that call. Uh, just like we need missionaries on the other side of the world, we need men and women to answer that call in rural, rural America. It's no longer Mayberry anymore. Um, people aren't going to church anymore. There's churches that are shuttering their doors. There are places that need a healthy church once again in America. And we're, we're seeing even just such a lack of biblical knowledge and understanding. So I think if men and women will answer that call, uh, there's great things to happen. So in the book, I talk a little bit about revitalization. Mm -hmm. We went through a season of revitalization, which caused us to go from arrows in to arrows out. Right. And that mindset got us in the in the right perspective to start planting churches and, and becoming a multi-site church in the rural context. Mm -hmm. Then from there, um, as we revived, I'll never forget the first community we went and planted in. Mm -hmm. It was a church that actually, we were blessed to partner with our network and the church was going to close. There were six people left in it. And uh, there was no pastors that would apply to this church in this town of 600. 
And so we came alongside, we partnered with, and uh, I'll never forget that one of the gentlemen that had been in the church for a long time and stayed with us, he said, this is the first time we've seen anybody saved or baptized in 20 years. Mm. And just, that's why we do this. That's why we said yes to this thing. Mm. And so we just walk through those basic principles. I tell some crazy stories on the journey of planting churches in rural, uh, but the mindset of rural communities and how do you get into those communities through being community engagement and community minded. Mm -hmm. um, and then I even talk about succession. Uh, I became a pastor because the pastor before me believed in me. Yes. Um, and then a friend of mine, his name's Keith Culver. He's now the pastor at, at Bethel in South Dakota. Uh, matter of fact, he's in his master's right now at yes, uh, right. Trinity. And, uh, and I mean, he's taken the, the church further and faster than I did. And so it's just, there's something powerful when we have healthy succession, we're caring about small towns. Uh, there's ways to go in and make change when you need to make change uh, without blowing everything up. So that's what we talk about in the book. Wow. It's so powerful and it's so relevant. I think every pastor really needs to grab one of these books and ministers truly understand the impact of just church planting the missional heart behind this because you know, the church is going to change the world and change the generation we're going to be have to be future oriented community outreach outward focus so jared you talk such a great deal about that in this book so thank you for your hard work i mean you labor over this right so let's talk briefly about your journey you graduated in 2019 with master's in missional leadership. You did it. You finished it. And here is the proof of that, right? But right. how was your journey? Of all the colleges and universities and Bible colleges, there's so many options. Why Trinity? And how did it impact your current ministry? Okay. Well, honestly, um, I just, I, I met Paul and Carol Alexander uh, when I was pastoring in the Dakotas. And uh, one, they're ruthless. Uh, they just kept coming after me and coming after me and coming after me and bugging me. Um, but I realized finally that they were right. Um, and God presented the opportunity for me to engage in, in school and go back. You know, I was never a great student, so I was concerned about how I was going to do. But I think as we get older and we get more experience in life, we just, our mindset shifts when we put our hands to something, especially when we're passionate about learning and being better leaders. Um, so uh, I, I'm, I'm so grateful that Paul and Carol uh, bugged me and wouldn't, wouldn't stop bugging me. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so when I stepped into it, it was great. And I will say this, um, having a master's degree and writing this book and having a thesis and all the things that come with this, um, yeah, I've got a diploma on the wall, but the doors that education opens for somebody like me, I don't think I'd be sitting in this seat I am today without my education. I really don't. Um, it'd be hard for me to sit not only just as a practitioner, but now I have education to back up the, the, the practical side of ministry. Mm -hmm. And I can talk and I can be in circles and be in certain situations and rooms that maybe I never would have been in before mm -hmm. if it wasn't for uh, taking on this education. It worked well for me, I think, for a couple of reasons, because Paul and Carol pushed. But I think Trinity is a unique place where they're so ministry minded um, and practically minded it worked for me as a lead pastor. I could still do my education and pastor my church and, and serve in the sheriff's office. I could do all those things. Um, and it made it possible. That's good. And, and we're just so proud that you're part of our Trinity family. Uh, for those of you who are considering this, and think about this, if you're a pastor, uh, you will get 25% discount on tuition waiver. If you are a, a district or network or national leader, the discount even goes higher. Um, also, there's what is called the alternate pathway. If you don't have a bachelor's degree, but you've been in ministry five years or more, you can easily and very likely can start a master's degree without even having a bachelor's degree because we consider your life ex experiences as legitimate uh, credits. So we're going to uh, have that kind of conversation. So if you're interested in this, any of this, there's five master's degree and one PhD in practical theology even. So reach out to us and turn new Bible college at edu. But here, Jared is a proof of amazing uh, work that Trinity Bible College and grad school is doing. I know Dr. Paul and Carol are watching you right now because then they know that we're going live at 630. <laughs> so, Thanks for pushing, guys. 
Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Alexanders, for your pursuit. And they they really see people with potential, and you were one of them. So, Jared, thank you. thank you so much for your influence. Thank you so much for your voice. And we're going to send you back so you can just just empower the local pastors uh, in North, uh, what is, where, where are we? North Dakota. <laughs> North, North Dakota, Dickinson, North Dakota. <laughs> That's right. Well, we, uh, we thank you. If there's any final thoughts that you want to speak to our Trinity alum or family. I would say uh, leverage your opportunities for Christ. You have walked a path for a reason. Use that experience, use your education. And uh, if God opens a door, give it a shot. You never know what God could do with it. Um, and I'm I'm sitting in that seat right now, experiencing that. So uh, go for it. God can do big things if you say yes. That's so true. And hey, guys, once again, if you want to win Jared's book, go ahead and tag your Trinity friend. Uh, it could be anybody who didn't even graduate, but maybe came here for a semester or so. They still are part of Trinity family. And then maybe write down where you might want to plant a church. Who knows? God can just plan a new church through uh, in partnership with CMN. And then Jared can be part of your life, right? Well, God bless you. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Jared. God bless you. Thank you.